Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. And once again... I invite you to join me as we journey through a strange and mysterious landscape filled with the terror of the unknown. Come as you are. You already own all the necessary equipment. All you need is your imagination. You've heard it said, there is no such thing as the perfect crime. But don't you believe it. History is filled with perfect crimes. After all, isn't every unsolved murder a perfect crime? We have a perfect crime for you to consider. And the ironic part of it is the fact that the murderer had no intention of killing his victim. Indeed, he was completely unaware of his existence. I saw this guy, Katie. Yeah? He had the pistol in his hand. It, it, it was still smoking. I, I knew he did it. I had him dead to light. Well, Stash, why didn't you make the arrest? Because I couldn't. You, you see a guy kill somebody? You're a cop and you don't move in to make the arrest? I... I, I was scared. Scared, okay, but you could have called for help. No, no, they, they'd never believe me. Why? Because this guy's name is Aaron Burr. Oh, I don't care if his name is King Tut. Well, he's as dead as King Tut. Aaron Burr died in 1836. Then how could he have killed somebody this morning? He did, Katie. Believe me, he did. <laughs> mystery drama, The Aaron Burr Murder Case, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Jack Grimes and George Petrie. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. tale takes place in the Garden State of New Jersey, in the town of Weehawken. Famous at one time for its ferry to Manhattan. But before that, long, long before that, Weehawken was notorious for a different activity. A dark, dangerous, deadly, indeed illegal activity. An activity we are about to witness. It is a misty morning. We're on a rocky ledge of the noble palisade that overlooks the majestic Hudson River. Two men, each dressed in dark and somber gray, face one another at a distance of 20 paces. Each man holds a slim but lethal-looking pistol, and each pistol barrel is exactly 11 inches long, as prescribed by the Code of Honor. Nearby, a small knot of quiet, darkly-dressed spectators. And now... One of the spectators steps forward. He's an imposing, white-haired military officer. Gentlemen, it is my duty to remind you, indeed to implore you, even at this final moment, to attempt to settle your differences peaceably. Then are you both agreed that honor can only be satisfied by an exchange of fire? So be it. You will hold your pistols at your sides, muzzles pointing to the ground. When I say, present... You will raise your weapon to aim. When I say fire, each of you has five seconds in which to make his shot. Are you ready, Colonel Burr? Are you ready, Major Hamilton? Very well. Present. Fire! That is it. Marvelous, marvelous. And now let us do it again. Yes. Honestly, George, must you drop plot like a wet lamp glued in a sack? Are we going to play the damn scene again, Mr. Paradis? I believe so, Mr. Daly. Do you know why? Please. Because you didn't play it the first time. The word play, gentlemen, must suggest lightness, imagination, spirit, a quality... I should have listened to my agent. All right, get up, George. It's method actor time. Leopold, I want the same Come on, setup. George. Now quit clowning around. Okay, get up. Bush with snow white roses at the very spot where he falls. And we can show his wound bleeding on the mouth. Come on, George. Don't go to sleep on us. There's no rest for the virtuous kid. Oh, yes, George. 
The next time you are shot, you must not sprawl to the ground like some pregnant hippopotamus. You are Alexander Hamilton. George. Financial wizard, soldier, statesman. George, is something the matter? Philosopher, aristocrat. You must die as you have lived. Get it, Max. Wait, Max. Something's wrong with George. Elegantly great, Max. Max, he's sick. He's sick? Oh, no, no, he can't be sick. He'll destroy my whole schedule. Something's wrong, Max. Something's George. wrong. George. He's got a funny look on his face. George, say you're all right. Say you're all right. He's unconscious. Look. Blood. Blood? That's blood oozing out of his chest. Max is dead. He can't be dead. We haven't shot the love scenes yet. We we need the police. You get one of those cops standing by the fence. Officer. George, you're not dead. You're not dead. You can't do this to me, George. Officer. Okay, okay. Uh, Hey, uh, just, just uh, stand back. Uh, everybody, oh, no, over the heat. This man is, is dead. All right, then, what's the trouble? Everybody has to stand back, huh? Hey, hey Chuck, call the ambulance. And, and nobody leave here, and don't anybody touch nothing. And, Lieutenant, he was lying on the ground. I didn't think anything of it until I looked very closely, and he was dead. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Is that all? For now. Am I, uh... Free to leave, Lieutenant? You're free to go, but you're not free to leave the uh, location, I believe you movie people call it. Thank you. Yeah. Sabota. Yeah, Lieutenant. Who's this actor who played the other part? Uh, Karen Burr. You seem to be an expert on this picture, Officer Sabota. Well, I tell you, Lieutenant, I've been watching so much, I think I know everybody's lines. So maybe this is your big chance to get into the movies. Yeah, no, no, not me, Lieutenant. You know, when the precinct gave me the special duty, I thought it'd be a piece of cake. These guys work too hard. They shape up before it even gets light. Well, Hollywood's lost. We are his game. Now, uh, who did play Aaron Burr? Well, everybody heard of him. Tony Bellows. Now, we'll see him. But first, send him that, uh, that one who's doing the St. Vitus dance outside. Oh, Mr. Maximilian Parody. He's the big wheel. Yeah, well, let's start in spinning and see what we get. Okay, Lieutenant. Uh, Mr. Paradine? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Bauman. Uh, sit down, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you indeed. Thank you for extending me hospitality in my own office. Oh, well, I'm sorry we took over your trailer, sir, but we needed a headquarters for this investigation. Uh, your name is Maximilian Paradine. Everyone knows that. Now, sir, at approximately 7 a.m. this morning, you staged a duel between two actors, a Mr. George Rivers and a Mr. Tony Bellows. Is that correct? That is not correct. I staged a duel between Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. In that time and in that place, for me, they were real people. Well, can we say that you staged the duel between Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr as they were portrayed by George Rivers and Tony Bellows? Yes, we can say that. And somehow, in a manner yet to be determined, Mr. George Rivers was killed. Arrest me, Lieutenant. Arrest you? Why? I am guilty. Of what? Murder. Murder? Yes. I killed George Withers. Mr. Paradine, at this point, I must advise you of your rights under the, the law. Lieutenant, I committed the deed. I shall pay the price. How did you murder George Withers? In drama as in life. It is the inevitable. And so, my artistry, my creativity could produce only the inevitable result. The death of Hamilton. Now my concern is the death of George Rivers. I know, I know. But at that time and in that place, they were one and the same. How did you murder George Rivers? I told you. What did you tell me? He died. As a testimony to the truth of my genius. Now look, I'm only asking how this happened. Very well. The average producer, writer, director, how would he make this picture? He would get the best box office names his budget could afford. He would shoot on some back lot in Hollywood. And as a result... But, sir, oh, and I... as a result, his alleged picture would have nothing of the mood, the spirit, the sense of being of Hamilton and Burr. What did I do? That's all you really have to tell me. I know uh, what I have to tell you. Hamilton and Burr. Bitter rivals. Bitter rivals for power in the infant republic. Who do I cast? George Rivers and Tony Bellows, rivals for preeminence as the leading men in the American theater. Yeah, well, and no... just as Hamilton and Burr vied for the affections of Miss Eliza Croy, I cast for that role Julia Starrett, who has just divorced Tony Bellows in order to live with George Rivers. Do you follow this? Yes, sir, but what I must ask you Do is... Do you I... understand how my actors now are under the same human tensions that tormented the people whom they portrayed? Sir... I only have a very... Hear me question. out. 
Now then, where do I stage the final fatal act of the tragedy? I go to the exact spot Hamilton and Bird chose for the denouement to their drama. The favorite dueling ground of the day. A field at the edge of the Palisades in Weehawken, New Jersey. Mr. Faraday. I not only place each of them in the precise positions they occupied on that fatal morning, I actually chose the morning itself. Wednesday, July 11, 7 a.m. So, you see, everything, everything is exactly as it was. The hatred, the tension, the time, the place, and therefore, the absolutely inevitable result. Well? Well, what? What is the procedure? I have just confessed to murder. What I'm waiting for you to tell me is how you killed him. How I killed him. He died because a pistol ball pierced his heart. Now, someone inserted that ball into the pistol that was fired by Mr. Tony Bellows. That someone is the murderer. Now, sir, is that someone you? No. Then you are not the killer. No one could have placed a ball into that pistol. Why do you say that? Because there is no place to put a ball and no way to fire it. How can you say... Ah, how can I say that simple? I provided these pistols myself. For all that they look authentic, they are only cat pistols. This is the pistol that fired the shot. Are you telling me it's not real? That's exactly what I'm telling you. I'm sorry, Mr. Faradine. This is an authentic pistol, and it has been fired. That's impossible, Lieutenant. Here, look. Let me show you why it... Yes? Lieutenant, this... This isn't the pistol that I, 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 I gave it. It isn't the same pistol. It isn't the pistol I had the prop department make for. Sort of. yep, yes, Lieutenant. Where'd you get this pistol? Well, it was lying on the ground, Lieutenant. Where? Well, near where Aaron Burb, yeah, I mean, Tony Bellows dropped it. It was laying there uh, along with his cloak. Th- this cloak? Yeah. On the table? Uh, yes, sir. I, I tell you, it was not the pistol that was used in the scene. Well, I don't know, Lieutenant. That's the one I found near where Tony Bellows was standing, and uh, uh, this one here is the one George Rivers had. Now, now you can see. That's the make-believe pistol. There were two of them. If there are two of them, where's the other one? But I, I, I don't know. It's about it. Well, this fake one and this real one, those were the only two. Get this Tony Bellows in here. All right. Mr. Bellows? Mr. Bellows? He's not out there, Lieutenant. That's a real pistol. Uh, look, uh, maybe he's in his trailer, Lieutenant. Well, find him and bring him in here. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Lieutenant, what is it, Mr. Parrish? I, 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 I don't know what to make of it. I, I, I don't know what to say. About what? This, this pistol. The name. The name. Here, here, look. Read what's engraved. Where? Just under the lock. Read it. It says Aaron Burr. That's what it says. Aaron Burr. Well, you might say, if this is the exact spot, Aaron Burr might have dropped it there, or lost it there many years ago, and uh, that's what... But no, this is no rusted, rotted relic. Indeed not. It is a well-oiled, well-kept, well-used weapon. And it has just been fired. But who fired it? Well, we still have two acts to go. Maybe we'll find out when I return with Act Two in just a few moments. Mr. Maximilian Paradigm, an authentic genius of the films, is shooting a motion picture on the duel between Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. And shooting seems to be the literal word for it, since George Rivers, who plays Alexander Hamilton, fell to the ground dead. He is dead because Tony Bellows, who plays Aaron Burr, evidently did not fire the prop pistol, which is a harmless replica, but a real lethal weapon. To complicate the situation, there is a name inscribed on this real pistol. And what is the name? Yes, you're staying with us. It's Aaron Burr. You say, uh, you've never seen this pistol before, Mr. Party. How, Lieutenant? How I'd like an answer, yes or no. Yes or no is an answer for small minds. To the best of your knowledge, Mr. Paradine, 
Have you ever seen this pistol? No, no, never. This. This is Aaron Burr's pistol. How do we know? He says so. His name is on it. How did it get here? You would have to ask Aaron Burr. What's that? What is this, Favota? Uh, Tony Bellows, the guy who plays Burr. He's gone. What do you mean he's gone? Well, he's nowhere around. Impossible. He has a contract. This is a shooting now day. Now, just hold it, Mr. Paradine. Now, when was the last time you saw Mr. Bellow? When? Yes, when? 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 We, uh, we were doing a scene. The, the camera establishes Mr. Burr. That's Bellow. You must not destroy my concentration. Now, now, the, uh, the camera pans to Mr. Hamilton, George Rivers. Back to Mr. Burr. On Daly's command, present. He raises the pistol, camera to Mr. Hamilton. On him, the word, fire. He falls. Discharging the pistol. And where did Mr. Bellows go? Where? Yes, where? I don't know. You don't know? I wasn't concerned with him. I was watching Mr. Hamilton. George played the scene badly. Oh, that's a terrible thing to say about an actor. And if you quote me, I shall deny it. But the last scene he ever played, he played badly. This is Bauman. Uh, Give me the chief. Terrible way for an actor to die. Yeah, Bauman at the movie thing. Uh, we want a Tony Bellows. Material witness, at least. Disappear. Uh-huh. Ask the New York cops if they can pick him up for us. He's got an awful lot of questions to answer. Now, Mr. Daly, you were the closest person to both parties during the dueling scene. Yes. What happened after the exchange of shots? Well, George Rivers fell to the ground. Well, we know and... that. Now, what about Aaron Burr? What, I mean, uh, Tony Bellow. I don't know. I, I wasn't looking at him. How does it happen that nobody was looking at it? Well, you see, the scene belongs to Hamilton. I mean, uh, George Rivers. So nobody can tell me what happened to Tony Bellows. Did he say or do anything at all this morning that might have seemed uh, unusual in any way? Well, I don't know. I don't... Oh, now that you mention it, I didn't see him until he was in place for the scene. Uh, Mr. Paradine, do your people have to report in or check in or, or shape up in any way? Well, there's a makeup call, but... Uh... But what? The camera wasn't going to be on his face today, so all that Tony had to do was be in costume and in place at 7 a.m. And this cloak was his costume? Yes. I, of course, designed it myself. It is nothing that I attend to every single detail. I permit others to take certain credits. But... But... But this is not the cloak. What do you mean, it's not the cloak? This is not the cloak that was made for Aaron Burr to wear in the scene. Provoto, where did Lieutenant, you... Lieutenant, this is the cloak that was laying on the ground near where Burr... Yeah, I mean, Tony Bellows was. The cloak and the pistol. I mean, where else would it come from? Gentlemen, please pay attention. This cloak is made from a heavy wool material. I have never seen a material like this. Mine was a cotton because I wanted but Mr. to... Mr. Paradine, and what? let me... Oh, no. Here it is. Inscribed below the collar. Look, read. Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr. Lieutenant, I am frightened. Mr. Paradine, are you positive this is not the... Cloak? Lieutenant, may I show you something? Look. Look, these stitches. And what about the stitches? Look at the stitches along every seam. Well, not a single one of these stitches was sewn by machine. This is not the cloak that was worn by Aaron Burr this morning, Mr. Boda. Yeah, but it's the one I found. I, I mean, if, if it wasn't lying there, what, where would I get it? Lieutenant Bowman. Yeah. Yeah. Where? Yeah, right now. Mr. Boda, you got a squad car out there? Yeah, Lieutenant. We're going across the river. The New York cops are holding Aaron Burr. I mean, Tony Bellows. I was here all the time, Lieutenant. Here? Here, in my apartment. Now, just a minute, Mr. Bellows. Are you telling me you were not on the set earlier this morning? That is exactly what I'm telling you. You better tell it from the beginning. All right, all right. I, uh, I got to bed late last night. We've been, uh, well, okay, I had a few. And the truth is, I... I did something for the first time in my whole career. I just, I just overslept. I, uh, I missed my assignment. And? Well, I was awakened by a, a persistent ringing of the doorbell. I kind of staggered out of bed. I mean, I was hung over, you know, and I, and I opened it, and there was a cop, and he said, I'm wanted for questioning by New Jersey police in connection with the killing of George Rivers. I'm, I didn't even know he was dead. How would I know? 
You deny that you were on the set this morning. Oh, yeah. You deny you fired the shot. How could I fire the shot if I wasn't there? But you were seen there, Mr. Bellows. Was I? Who saw me? The cast, the director, the crew, and this officer here, patrolman Svoboda. Now, wait a minute. Officer, Hmm? did you see me on the set this morning? Yes, Mr. Bellows, I did. Are you sure, officer? Yes, sir. Now, look at it this way, officer. You saw somebody in costume. You knew I was playing the part. Now, officer, realizing that my life could depend on your answer, just think. Did you actually see me, or did you naturally and automatically assume it was me? Well, Sloboda? Well, Lieutenant, now that it's, you know, it's put that way, I, I, I don't know. What don't you know? Well, I don't know if it really was him. I mean, sure, I thought it was him, but I, I couldn't put my hand on the Bible and swear. But if, if it wasn't him, who was it? I, I don't know. <sighs> Mr. Bellows, have you any objection to coming back with us? No, Lieutenant. None at all. Will you excuse me while I change clothes? I'll just be a minute. Go ahead. Well, Lieutenant? All I know is somebody killed Alexander Hamilton. Now, listen to me. I'm talking like a flaky director. I mean, somebody killed George Rivers. Yeah, but who? Sabota, you were there. You're a cop, a trained observer. Now, tell me. What did you see? Okay, I'm standing just inside the fence by the gate. I'm with Chuck and Smitty. They're not watching. I am. Okay, it's just about 7 a.m., so there's Hamilton. Yeah, I mean Rivers, and there's Tony Bellows, and they're ready to shoot. When was the first time you saw Tony Bellows? Yeah, well, that's just it. Now I can't be sure it was Tony Bellows. Okay, when was the first time you saw someone that looked like him? When? Well, just then. You mean you didn't see him on the set before? You didn't see him come out of the dressing room trailer? No, Lieutenant. (sighs) Okay... Um, uh, they, they play the thing. They shoot. Now what? Well, I'm watching Hamilton. Yeah, I mean Rivers. I say to Smitty, I bet she makes him play it again. But Bellows, Tony Bellows, what about him? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not looking at him. Then there's all the noise and the commotion, and I run over there. George Rivers is dead. And all through this, you don't see Bellows? No, sir. We put in the call for the ambulance. And there's no sign of Bellows? Well, I don't see him, but I'm not, I'm not looking for him. So you, you bring in the pistol and the cloak? Uh, the cloak. Now that you say it, something's bothering me. Uh, b- b- before the shot, he's wearing the cloak, but after the shot, right after, I think, he's not wearing it. Now, why would he take it off? Sabota, how would you know? You said you weren't looking at him. You were looking at Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, Lieutenant, but you don't have to look at somebody to be aware of him. You, you know what I mean? And I'm aware of the fact that he's not wearing the cloak. And I see him toss away the pistol, and I think there's uh, another guy. What other guy? Who? I don't know. Another actor? I don't know. It it don't look like any of the other actors. Who did it look like? It was something red. What are you talking about? Red? Why why, why should I be thinking of the color red? To go to this other guy. Who? If... There really was another guy. Uh, Smavota, don't you go kooky on me now. I'm trying to think, Lieutenant. I'm trying to remember. So, you kept your promise, Tony. What promise, Julia? When I decided to leave you, you swore you'd kill George. How about it, Mr. Bellows? Did you? I... I didn't swear. I... I merely threatened. And obviously he kept his word. Oh, Lieutenant, did you ever say things in anger that could come back to haunt you? Did you threaten to kill him? Yes, I suppose I did. He killed George because it was the only way. What only way? The only way to get rid of him. Why would I want to get rid of George Rivers? Because it had become obvious to anyone with even the slightest knowledge of theater that George was the more accomplished, the more versatile, the better actor. That is not true. To call the silly, mannered posturings of George Rivers acting is the height of stupidity. And then, of course, there's me. I walked out on you and chose him. You think I'd commit murder for a little day? Okay, you folks have your fight some other time. Miss Tarrant, did you or did you not see Tony Bellows on the set this morning? No. And I have no further questions to ask. But I have something to tell you, Lieutenant. Tony Bellows killed George Rivers. How could I kill him if I wasn't here? You were here even if I didn't see you. Who says so? I really don't know why we're having this kind of argument. It's a very simple way to find out. Hold it right there. Now, 
No, it's no good, Mr. Paradine. You can't see his face. Ah, but you can see the cloak and the pistol so clearly. But I want his face. Uh, keep the projector going. Is there any more film? Yes, Lieutenant. Plenty of film, but... But nothing that will show you the face. I could just shoot a duel and not show the face Are of one of Are you the... telling me how to stage a dramatic film? Well, it would it? seem to me that simple. Common sense. Everybody is a director. Now look, there are two people in the duel. Why show only one face? Because you do not dilute the drama. If you were to show both the concentration of the audience... If you'd have shot be... both faces, I'd have been able to prove that Tony Bellows was or wasn't here. I cannot be expected to destroy a dramatic scene for the benefit of the Weehawken, New Jersey Police Department. Now look. Somebody played that scene with George Withers this morning. Now, if it wasn't Tony Bellows, who was it? Who played the part of Aaron Burr? All right. Who? Let us be completely objective. Let us, as they say, review our options. First, despite what he says, it was Tony Bellows. Second... It was Aaron Burr. Yes, Aaron Burr, dead and gone these many years. But Aaron Burr all the same. Third? Oh, well. See if you can figure it. And I'll be back in a few moments with the third act to check you out. George Rivers and Tony Bellows two actors who hate each other in real life are playing the parts of Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr, two people who also hated each other in real life. Comes the duel scene, and George, who plays Hamilton, is shot dead. Tony insists he wasn't there. But somebody played the part of Aaron Burr and played it for keeps. The question, who? I wasn't here, and that's why no one can say they saw me. All right, no one saw no one remembers getting a good look at Aaron Burr this morning. Now, if it wasn't you, Mr. Bellows, then somebody wore that cloak and used that pistol. Lieutenant, I can suggest a way out of the difficulty. The pistol, whose fingerprints are on it. Uh, things don't work out as conveniently for the police as they do for the movies, Mr. Paradine. There are no fingerprints on it. Uh, Lieutenant? Yes, sir, boy. Red hair. Why do I remember a guy with red hair, bright red hair? Mr. Paradine, hmm? anybody with red hair in the company? Red hair? Yeah. No. My philosophy is to use a redhead only as a lead. You see, if anyone else had red hair, it would... Yeah, detract. yeah, I know. It would detract. What about this guy with red hair, Svoboda? I don't know. I'm... I'm just trying to put it together in my own mind. Well, thank you for the lift back to Manhattan, Lieutenant. We brought you over. We bring you back. Will I be wanted again for, uh... Just keep yourself available. Okay. Anything else you have to ask me? No. Well, thanks again for the lift. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. How have you been getting back and forth from here to Jersey? Oh, it's nothing to it. By car, get onto the West Side Highway, into the Lincoln Tunnel, and there I am, and we're walking. And, um, how long does it take you? Oh, early in the morning, no traffic, 20 minutes. Oh. Oh, I think I see what you're driving at. Well, I'm not driving at anything. Uh, where do you keep the car? They have a garage in the basement of the apartment house. Hmm. Well, see you around, Mr. Bellows. Yeah. Once again, thanks for the lift. Well, while we're here, we'll ask. <laughs> You in charge of this garage? I in charge of nothing. I just work here. Police. Yeah, I know. I can always tell a cop. Now, what time did you come on in the morning? Eight o'clock. Who's on before you get here? Nobody. The night man quits after he washes the car. And what time is that? Well, I guess it's all done by half past three, four o'clock. So if someone picks up his car between four and eight in the morning, there's no one here. <laughs> That's the way it goes. When you got here at eight o'clock, was Tony Bellow's car in the garage? Uh, yes, sir, it was. And talking about Tony Bellows' car, I'm washing it now. I see. Anything else? Yeah, I, um, I noticed on the blackboard there you got some names. And Mr. Bellows is one of them. What does that mean? Oh, those are the full service customers. You see, each one is supposed to have their car washed every night in the week. Okay, thanks. You know what I always say? Support the local cops. <laughs> Hold it. 
You're washing Mr. Bellow's car now? Why? You can see why. It's filthy. All of that Jersey mud and dirt. Was it... Was it that way when you came in at 8 this morning? It's been that way all day. It's the first chance I had to get out. But it. if the night man washed it last night and it hasn't been used since, and how did it get so muddy? Could he have forgotten to wash it? Who, oh, Jerry? Oh, we call him Jerry the Elephant. He never forgets. <laughs> And so, in the confusion after the shooting, you you sneaked off the set. I did not. You got into your car. No. You drove back across the tunnel and into your garage, and you were upstairs before the day man showed up. It isn't true. But you forgot one thing. The car is washed every night. You got it dirty when you took it out. I didn't take it out. And how did it get full of mud? I don't know. Ah, yes, I do. The night man didn't wash it. He swears he did. Oh, he's lying. Plenty of times he forgets or he's too lazy. And I pay good money for that service. You're not getting your money's worth. Why didn't you complain? I... Well, I did. To whom? To, to his boss, naturally. If we asked his boss, would he remember your complaining? If the night man makes a habit of forgetting to wash your car, wouldn't the day man notice? Should we ask him? What would he say? Let me alone. Just let me alone. I I didn't kill him. I did not kill him. Yes, we better let you alone for a while. Have something to drink. Relax. Think about it. Mr. Svoboda? Huh? Oh, uh, what is it, Mrs. Swoboda? Well, how does it happen you're not in bed? I wake up and there I am all by myself. Uh, Katie, I'm... I'm scared. Oh, what's the matter? I can't explain it. Well, try. Should I make coffee? No, 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 love. Just, just sit here. I'm... I'm, I'm really scared. Oh, honey, you scared? Dad, you don't even know what that word means. I've been reading something in these books. Let me see those. The Life and Death of Alexander Hamilton. Hey, I thought you got out some books so you could finally study for the sergeant's exam. What's this all about? How did I know, Katie? How did I know? How did you know what? Exactly how it happened. How what happened? How Burr killed Hamilton. I've been reading these books all about that duel, the reports, the eyewitness accounts, and they all agree on, on what I saw. Well, what do you think you saw? I saw... Burr, Aaron Burr, just before the duel, while he was waiting, slip off his cloak. And then I remember the look on his face after he fired his pistol. Not that. No, sh 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 he, he, he was scared. I guess he really didn't mean to kill Hamilton, and he just threw away the pistol. And he was about to rush over to where Hamilton fell, and this red-haired man stopped him. Stopped him? Just held him. And he then started walking Burr away. And? And that's all I saw. Nobody else saw a red-haired guy, but I did. And you know who he was? Who? All right, Burr has a second. You know, a guy to, to back him up, huh? Uh-huh. And this guy's name was Van Ness. And he had red hair. So? What does that mean? Do you realize what I saw? I saw it exactly as it happened, as it took place, on Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock on July 11th, 1804. Well, I saw the real duel. And somehow the real Aaron Burr fired, and the bullet hit George Rivers, the actor. Oh. Katie, I saw it. Well, I, I'm not saying you it's the only It's the only way to explain it. The, the only way it could have happened. Sash, if the duel took place in 1804, how Look, could... Katie, it's, it's like if you can duplicate all the exact conditions, you can maybe... Uh, okay, Sash. Look, they're going to hang it on this Tony Bella. Darling, he did it. No, Katie. Aaron Burr did it. That's what happened. That's, that's the crazy thing that happened. But what can you do about it? I gotta tell Bauman. No, 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 Stash, don't. But Tony Bellows is innocent. You tell that kind of story to Bauman. You know what they'll do? It doesn't matter. If you know the truth, you gotta tell it. But you don't know it's the truth. All right, look, here, here in this book. Uh, see what the guy writes? Um... Uh, and when Burr saw that he had killed the precious enemy, he threw his pistol away as if it were a thing unclean and started to rush toward his fallen friend and foe. And only the red-haired Van Ness, who, fearing for Burr's safety, managed to spirit him away. So? That's what I saw. Uh. That's what I saw, how he threw away the pistol, how he wanted to run to Hamilton. That's what the man's writing about. <laughs> 
And you say you actually saw Aaron Burr? The only thing that makes sense, Lieutenant. And somehow, they were back in 1804. Yes, Lieutenant. And as the bullet flew from the real Aaron Burr's pistol, it uh, somehow killed George Rivers. Yes, Lieutenant. Well, uh, what do you suggest we do? We have to do something to help Tony Bellows. No, I mean, what do we do about you, Svoboda? Me? I can forget it. Uh, forget it? You're, you're a good cop. Lieutenant, do you think maybe look, I'm... Uh, uh... Look, cops are human like everybody else. We're not supermen. But I'm not nuts. I saw it. I, I saw Aaron Burr. How are things at home, Svoboda? Oh, look, Lieutenant. It's tough to be a cop's wife, so sometimes a guy feels a lot of pressure. Lieutenant, everything is just great at home. And you take a lot of flack. People make remarks. A cop is everybody's favorite target. You know, they used to call us flat feet and bulls. Today, we're pigs and fuzz. It can get to a guy. Lieutenant, all that rolls off my back. I know what I saw. You want to go on sick leave? Oh, is that how it is? How else can it be? Oh, okay. Say that Bellows did kill him. How can he expect to get away with it? I'll let you know when I'm ready to leave, God. What do you want? Who are you? Mr. Bellows. My name is Swoboda. You look familiar. Oh. You're the cop who was on the set. <laughs> Why are you here? I heard the verdict. I'm, I'm sorry. Twenty years. Twenty, and I'm innocent. Believe me, I'm innocent. Why didn't anyone believe me? I believe you. You do? Oh, that's great. I want to help you. How? Maybe I can catch the real killer. Do you know who it is? Yeah. Who? Nobody wants to believe it. Listen, who is it? It's Alan Burr. Alan Burr? Yes. Oh. Well, thanks a lot for dropping by, officer. I, I, I really appreciate it. It's true. Oh, sure. Sure. I, I, I can't tell my superiors about it because they'd never buy it. Well, no. No, of course not. But, but, but I'm going to work on it independently. Yeah. Yeah, you do that. I just came by here to tell you that you still have a chance. Not much of a chance, but it's all there is. Oh, that's, uh, that's great. Uh, what is it? Well, the next time that July 11th falls on a Wednesday, I'll be there. At that field at 7 in the morning. And when Burr shows up for the duel... I'll try to arrest him for the murder of George Rivers. That will be seven years from now. At that time, hopefully, we will bring you the story. After all, what is time? As the philosopher says, tis but a wheel that turns round and round. And it always moves backward in order to go forward. What we have seen... We shall see you again. I'll be back shortly. Was Mr. Tony Bellows really home asleep during the duel? Did Officer Svoboda really see Aaron Burr and his second, Mr. Van Ness? We never take sides around here. We serve the feast and let each help himself to those dishes that please him best. Certainly there is nourishment enough to sustain both points of view. Our cast included Jack Grimes, George Petrie, Joan Shea, William Redfield, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I knew there was something mysterious going on in this house. Something was wrong. Maybe it wasn't as deadly as Mayer had claimed. But I felt certain it wasn't as innocent as her father had asserted. And I also knew that I wasn't going to rest until I found out. I got out of bed and dressed myself. And I walked quietly to the door. And I turned the handle. And that's when I discovered that it was locked. Locked from the outside. I walked to the window, and I discovered that I couldn't open it. 
now I knew with crystal clarity I was a prisoner. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.